Leon, learning with Leon, which is a fantastic stream, learning about stuff. Um, we are going to do the beginner boost. So RWX Rob slash boost on GitHub. May the 24th, uh, May the 4th, sorry. May the 4th is our first day, but I'm getting ready for it before then. Uh, you can go there now and watch the videos from 2021 and get ready. installed. So if you want to start working on that now, you can do it with Docker. You can do it by installing a, a virtual machine headlessly, I believe, I think is best. And you can start playing around with Linux way before the boost. But you can watch the videos from 2021 right now if you yeah, want. But some people still don't know what I'm running because I switch all the time, like every other good Linux person. Uh, I run Ubuntu Linux server, like most companies, either that or Red Hat, in a virtual machine running without a GUI, headless, on my virtual box, virtual machine. I'm mentioning that that allows me, I have two gigs of RAM and uh, two cores, and that allows me to run Docker as God intended inside of Linux on a virtual machine. And it's way, way faster than WSL2. It's ridiculous how fast it is. People who have Mac with M1s, I don't know what to tell you. VirtualBox does not support it. They have announced that they will never support it. So you're out of luck. There is no virtual machine software that is free that will run on a Mac M1. So if you don't want that, fine. Otherwise, buy VMware Fusion and you're set. Programming and completion attempting. So this is where we are. We got uh, our our comp dot file or completion for file system stuff working uh, with subdirectories and stuff. But now we need to do uh, stuff within those subdirectories. We need to fix that, and we need to do parent directories. What we need to do is we need to allow we need to be able to pass a function to everything in the list and have it applied equally to the things in the list. And this, my friends, is generic. So. Because we don't give a shit what it is. We absolutely don't. Um, and this function that I'm about to write could not be written without generics. It requires generics. So what does it look like? I mean, this is why they're called generics. <laughs> how, how much more generic can you get? What's an operator? It's a function that takes something in and sends something out. <laughs> Oh, I think that's so funny. I don't know why I think that's funny. Can you imagine the interactive story games that you can make using this? Every single, you could make commands that keep track of where you are. You can make a full interactive story game that runs from a from scratch Docker container. There's just so many possibilities. All right, so, um, but one thing at a time. All right, so let's do this. Imagine uh, we created a filter.apply function that takes any input and returns any output. And it applies the transformation to all the items in the slice that are passed in. And it, it uses a function operator that takes any kind of input and returns any kind of output and returns a new set. It turns uh, Go very much into something like JavaScript fat arrow functions. Uh, a, a something that just adds a prefix, which is ultimately just adding the prefix, right? Just has to take in the input and it, it defines a function that just transforms each item and that makes things worse. I could just make a ton of filters. You know, you know the same thing you would do or you would make an extra single command that does a really amazing thing in Unix? Well, that's what you can do now with filters. You can add a function that does one thing really well and then chain them Turn together. Go Haskell. <laughs> I mean, it could be done. It could be done. Otherwise, you're stuck with like Lisp enclosure syntax with lots and lots of, you know, enclosing. But... You could do it. It could be done. It might actually be done eventually because I'm making a commander that that's really, really high level and I want it to replace my bash scripts. So I want to be able to write stuff really fast and that means I want to be able to be really, really functional about how I write things. And so I'm making a couple helpers right now to help me do that. So just to summarize, we've gotten down a rabbit hole a little bit, uh, creating a functional library that has the generic things in it called map uh, afro senpai i suggested that i actually not use uh apply to f and use you know the word map but i was like it's confusing to use the word map and go because you, okay, you know what let's uh let's figure this out what if we had a better package name and so we ended up arriving we started with fun and then we ended up arriving with fn and that's going to really freak rust programmers out which is even better and so that's the new name for my functional sub package of bonsai um, so yeah, we can have functions and can have loops and I can put the loop in there. I can say loop dot do. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me so happy. <laughs>
I am so easily pleased by things such as like great naming. I welcome our bot overlords. Yes. <laughs> I'm just so happy by that. I get so ha I get happy by the simplest of things. This makes me incredibly happy. I mean, this just makes me so happy. I have no idea. If I never wrote another loop in my life, I'd be totally happy. And we'll make map a library of maps. And then under the FN, we'll have FN.map and the FN.filter. And that'll be the top level. But the library of those implementations of a map will go under the other packages. How does that sound? Phage. It's like got... It's like got a piece of flesh from this language and a piece of flesh from this language and a piece of flesh from this language and all slapped onto the guy's face for no reason at all. It makes no sense. It's totally disgusting. <laughs> we did get uh, sort of distracted by, by, this, by this, this rabbit hole, which has been really fantastic, though, because it's made, it's made the code look really good. And we're going to be able to add uh, some functional stuff under FN and looping like we do with Lisp and some set stuff for unions and all that. So we're much more it able to truth. do stuff. It's a universal truth. It just worked. Look at how fast I just made that thing pass. Because it it causes you to unthink, I think. I don't know what it deals. I don't fucking know. It just works. It just works. I'm telling you, it just fucking works. Type it. I have written some of the best code in my life after drinking like a full pint of IPA at a pub. I've been sitting there with like a lot of white noise around me and I'm just like kicking ass. I'm telling you, that is the way to get coding done on a weekend if you really want to. I'm not even kidding. I am going to fucking party if this is true. Can you believe it? It just all of a sudden started working. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> my code works. That's unexpected. <laughs> Mazai is going to kick everybody's ass. All the commanders out there are going to weep to their mommies because Banzai will destroy them. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. Don't get freaked out. Shedding to come. Here it comes. Here it comes. I'm going to add some more loops. Loops are for the lazy. You're not a good programmer unless you're really fucking lazy. The lazy programmers are all the good programmers. You know why? Because they do shit so that they don't have to do shit. That's why. Lazy programmers are awesome. You need to like get shit done faster. You need to automate more. No. No. It's just not acceptable. It's fucking academia it doesn't have a fucking clue about anything in the whole fucking world. That's my feelings on academia, in case you were wondering. It's why I'm not a professor. Where's the best way to learn Kubernetes from beginner to advanced? The, the best place is to use kubeadm and to install uh, like three VMs on your local machine and run them and install it and then go through all the hassles of learning it and then read about the thing that you hit as you go. There's really no course on that. The Udemy course, course is, is horrible. absolutely horrible. Uh, I mean, the Nana four-hour course on YouTube is not bad. It's just about four hour, four four years out of date. And this is coming from a guy who has to learn Kubernetes as his core responsibility at work every day. And I'm you. telling you, uh, my solution, my best suggestion is for you to make three or four VMs on your computer and then set up those VMs to be a Kubernetes cluster on-prem. And that will give you an experience that the cloud will never give you. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that right now. When you set up Kubernetes and you study in the cloud, the cloud, whether it be GCP or Azure or whatever, it provides a load balancer. It provides an ingress. It provides these things that you don't get to ever understand because it came with it. So the best way to study is locally because you have to set up that stuff yourself uh, from the industry that the best way to learn this is to set up your own cluster. And frankly, the best way to set up your own cluster isn't even Raspberry Pi. It's not. The best way to set up your own cluster is to create three or four VMs and do the installation that way. Changed jobs because of the COVID thing. Worked. Happened. I'm telling you, do it. I don't care if you think you don't know anything. Stream it anyway because you'll be able to share and there's going to be somebody out there who's going to relate to you because you're a beginner. Do it. Just do it. Unless you have young kids that you don't want to get doxxed or something. I used to do the same thing. I went to a YouTube concert, a YouTube simulated concert in YouTube. That people on the stage and everything. It's one of the most amazing moments of my entire life. It was so crazy amazing. And there was hundreds of people in this sim. And they were all jumping around and dancing and stuff. And I swear to God, it felt like I was there. 
I don't so, know. I was so pissed off by that very thing. Why the fuck they put Bitwise first? Because they want to flex or some shit? Don't flex in your beginner documentation. My God, people. My God, people. Make, you know, beginner-friendly stuff. 